Hello, Love everyone. This Hope is Chris. Radio. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Chris. And I'd like to welcome you to another uh, uh, conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. I'm a little late today because I just got off the freeway in Southern California, and I'm sitting in a in a beautiful Target parking lot with the wonderful Amelia Centara with me. Amelia, say hello. Hello, everybody. So in, in today's in today's um, conversation, I would like to discuss uh, the effects of of chemical addictions such as alcoholism or drug addiction, and and how that can affect your kundalini. But first, I would like to say thank you to Amelia Centara and her husband John and children, Jonathan and Emma, and extended family uh, from the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland. Thank you for sponsoring this program and allowing this information to come to so many. So thank you, Amelia. You're very welcome. I'd also like to thank Eileen Laurel for the many ways that she helps. And if anyone would like to to uh, to, to see what Eileen's story is, she is on YouTube on the Chrisum Zero Kundalini uh, channel on YouTube. So feel free to visit there. Another place for you to receive some of this information is on the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website, and that's the numeral one. And then also at Kundalini Awakening Seminars dot com, you can reach uh, you can you can read a lot of the information there is pertinent to how we uh, look at the Kundalini here. Uh, some groups that you may want, wish to join would be uh, on Facebook Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Facebook groups Kundalini Awakening exclamation point on Facebook groups, uh, and a Kundalini Ashram on Facebook groups, as well as on the Yahoo network, you can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com, as well as Kundalini Healing at yahoogroups.com. So thank you, everybody, for for joining in. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and begin this. And uh, so, oh, just in case you want to call in, the number to call in is uh, area code 347-934-0026. So once again, that number is area code 347-934-0026. And uh, if I can talk Amelia Centauri into keeping the uh, iPad present and accounted for then we'll be able to see you if you call. Okay, so with the Kundalini, it often comes on in such a way as to as to really defy your your reality. And if you're mixing that in with alcohol, for instance, just use alcohol first. Uh, alcohol itself, if, it, if you have reached the stage uh, in your use of alcohol, where it has become a necessity for you, then I really want you to begin to understand that the the alcohol itself can begin to carve holes into your energetic envelope or the aura of energy around you. Okay. Uh, this allows <clears throat> other spiritual phenomena or spiritual creation to come through. Not all spiritual creation is has your best interests at heart, so to speak. Uh, there's a lot of uh, predatorial type of scenarios, as well as there's a lot of beautiful, kind, loving, friendly influences as well. However, when we do the alcohol, we reach into a level of of the of the astral area, which is the the next area right above and blending with the physical area, we reach into levels of the astral that are uh, commonly inhabited by spiritual creation that is somewhat challenged. Uh, If you've ever seen a person um, whom we would refer to in the United States as a drunk on the side of the road or near an intersection talking to themselves, having a full-on conversation with themselves or hitting themselves, uh, you will know that this person is is infested 
with many spiritual consciousness that that are in in essence attacking his system attacking his awareness attacking his energy and and that has physical ramification that can really begin to to bring on a disparity in the physical health of the person uh you know leading to an early death or, or a, an early onset of illness with the kundalini this can be even more pronounced as we go as we go through the transformation which is similar to to a butterfly exiting the cocoon well that is a very sensitive stage you know, as the butterfly is exiting the cocoon, it's basically um, available to any kind of predation or any kind of predator or any kind of uh, a, a manipulative event upon them. And, you know, alcohol, you know, inordinate alcohol consumption is similar to uh, having holes uh, developed within the cocoon before the person is ready to exit it. And so while you're in situ of the cocoon, uh, you know, you're you're already being attacked by spiritual uh, creation. Uh, and once again, I don't want anybody to get the idea that everything spiritual that Christmas is talking about is bad or is going to it's going to prey upon you. That's not the case. But when you when you delve into the areas of, of alcohol or the related areas of drug, you know, acute or addicted drug consumption, well, yes, you're going to attract those types of, of spiritual life form that will indeed, you know, pre- prey upon you or, or attack you in some way. Um, as the person continues to to uh, imbibe in these areas, um, you know, within a Kundalini context, uh, a person can become uh, extremely mentally and emotionally unstable. Often, Kundalini will will require that the person begin to detach from that addiction before it comes up, or at least it will begin to initiate a series of events in a person that allow that person to understand that they no longer are interested in alcohol because the kundalini in them is no longer interested in alcohol. And this this carries over. It's not just alcohol. It's it's any form of sensate addiction that we use to to give ourselves uh, stimulation, whether it's joyful stimulation or or uh, sexual stimulation, or inebriation-based stimulations. With alcohol, I I classify alcohol as as one of the worst ones because, number one, it's legal. Anybody can get it, basically, if they try hard enough to get it, even the ones that are underage here in the United States. They can get the alcohol, and they can begin to develop their addiction to that substance. And it's happening every day. Uh, it may not be happening to you, everyone who's listening right now and in the archives, and I want to welcome everyone to the archives, uh, but it is it is happening every day. I mean, I'm sitting here in Southern California, uh, April or May 1st, Southern California, Los Angeles, and it's happening all around me here. There's a school right across from me, and I'm sure that their social situation indicates that, that in order to to be a real man or a real woman, you have to consume a certain level of alcoholic beverage, uh, you know, and, and, and have the results of that consumption. At first, you know, it, it won't damage you so much. Uh, you'll be able to recover from it quickly. But as time goes on and as usage continues and is expanded, well, then that recovery period slows down and, and you know, the energetic envelope begins to be damaged and then entered by by other spiritual awareness. And so I just want you to know that. In the Kundalini context, a person can, can, as I mentioned before, be stimulated by the Kundalini awareness itself to stop the drinking or uh, as other spiritual consciousness come in contact with that individual, uh, a psychic uh, disaster can occur. And in that in that disaster, uh, entities can infect the person, begin to control the person, begin to live that person's life. That 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 person has abdicated 
through the intentional addiction to alcoholism. Now, uh, many of you who know my writings or know me personally and know what I espouse, you know that I espouse Yogananda's uh, ideologies and many of his teachings. Uh, although he wasn't speaking directly to Kundalini people, uh, he, he, he spoke very, very clearly on a number of issues. And in some of these issues, uh, he wrote uh, in his Harmonizing Physical, Mental, and Spiritual Methods of Healing, he wrote that with the power of your mind, you can work changes in the life in the body as well as in the body itself. Who but your mind is giving strength to the body? By healthful stimulation of the body, you can make the mind feel better. By stimulation of the life, you can make the mind and body feel better. They are all correlated. The physical effects is mental, and the mental affects the physical because they are interrelated. Therefore, you can affect the body through the mind or, or the mind through the body. Thus, many people think they have to drink in order to feel happy. Again, interrelation between the body and the mind. But a thousand bottles of wine could not create, create the intoxicating joy that can be produced by just mind power and without the devastating side effects. Uh, so, so this is from Yogananda. Yogananda basically is echoing that uh, with the power of the mind, just the mind, we're not even talking about the Kundalini, we're talking just the mind you know, uh, a balance of the mind and the body can produce, you know, wonderful results, certainly the results that can help a person kick any kind of an addictive, uh, uh, an addiction or having an addictive nature. So with the alcohol, because it is legal and easily uh, partaken of all over the world, uh, within a kundalini context, I will suggest that you stop it completely. Stop it completely. Uh, and now if we move on to even some of the harder types of drugs, such as, say, methamphetamine. Methamphetamine is literally like injecting yourself with a corrosive acid. And, yes, you know, it speeds up your metabolism, and, you know, you don't have to sleep for as long a period of time, and they call it crank, and they call it crystal meth, and they call it, you know, all these different street names that I that I really don't know to mention. Uh, they snort it, they smoke it, they inject it. You really need to understand that, that this is not the way to go at all in any way, shape, or form. This is basically a slow-motion suicide that, that will age your body prematurely, that will uh, bring, bring upon yourself some extreme uh, health toxicities. Uh, do not in any way, shape, or form partake of these substances. Uh, it will not help you. It will only hurt you. The, the, the small, the small uh, time of having that high on you uh, is, is eclipsed by the endless amount of time that the, the debilitating health effects uh, will bring you. So really, really, really do not inject those white powders into your body. And if you have the kundalini, if you awaken to the kundalini through drug use, use that opportunity to break that addiction. Use that opportunity to break that addiction. And yes, yes, you will be chased by demons. It's common. You will be chased by demons. And this is, this is part of the way that the divine forces... Uh, try to help you out of this scenario. Just like with the alcohol and you get the delirium tremens, which is commonly referred to as the DDTs, and, you you know, you see you, you have bugs covering you and, and, you know, just covering the body and just basically scaring people to pieces. This is another way that the divine comes into your life to help correct you away from the error of your ways. And with the Kundalini, this will come to you in real time. I mean waking time, period. You, you won't have to be in an alcoholic stupor or, or, or within a recovery period, you know, when when a person is put in, a, in, a, in some sort of a situation where they're no longer able to have alcohol after being addicted to it for years. They can have the delirium tremens. Well, with the Kundalini person, it can just happen anyway. So really, really... You know, do your best to steer yourself away. And if you believe in the divine, 
what uh, what uh, Yogananda refers to as the mind is, is also referred to in my context with the Kundalini as the divine. If you really, really reach into the divine, your own divine, uh, you can accomplish anything, especially with the amplified power of Kundalini behind it. You can fight any addiction. You can end it. You can end it in a day, in a nanosecond, with just a thought. You can end it and begin a, re a resuscitation of the healing natures within your body, okay, amplified by the Kundalini. So, so you know, getting back to the methamphetamine, do not do this. And when the demons are chasing you, take that as a as a hint and a corrective measure given to you from the divine to to take yourself out of this slow motion suicide. Take yourself out of it. Okay, and then you know we can we can apply this to. Uh, to levels of smoking, uh, the smoking addiction. I've helped many people with, you know, recover from smoking addiction, and and it doesn't return to them. And I want you to know that that you don't need a chrism or a yogananda to do this. You can do it yourself. Why, why, you know, why, uh, why be dependent upon another person who has these gifts or skills? Why not develop them on your own? Let me ask you, Amelia, why not develop them on your own? Well, <laughs> good question. <laughs> well, I know for myself, I definitely had, I mean, I've given up alcohol, but I had a big addiction to smoking. And while smoking isn't seen, you know, by people in the same way as, say, um, the things that you've just spoken about, it is an addiction. And um, it can be given up. It can be completely given up um, in the way that you spoke of. And in terms of um, when my Kundalini came to me, um, smoking was to be given up. It was to be finished and done with. And that's kind of the way it occurred, really. Um, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't such an effort for me because suddenly it it just, there were other things I was to do instead of lighting a cigarette. Um, I was to do other things, you know, I was to surrender to the Kundalini and therefore it really did not take great effort. And have you, have you resumed smoking? No, never. <laughs> well, Amelia is a perfect example of, of how the Kundalini's uh, transformation of an individual out of an addiction that is deleterious to their body is a permanent, permanent healing of that person's addiction. And, uh, you know, when we, we go back to, to Yogananda and some of his teachings, you know, he basically says that in the ultimate analysis, we find that everything is thought force. Your body, the house you live in, the light of day, everything you behold, you know, from the glasses you are wearing to help you see better are all nothing but condensed thought. Suppose you fall asleep right now and dream you are walking that garden and suddenly a snake darts out and bites you on the leg. You suffer great fear and terrible pain. You're taken to a doctor who gives you the antidote and gradually you feel all right. There is no more pain. Now what happened? What happened in that dreamland? You enjoyed the beautiful garden. You experienced fear and pain. You appreciated the sense of well-being after being treated by medicine. Yet all of these experiences were nothing but the fruits of thought in your dream. When you awaken, you say, oh, my goodness, there is no bite on my leg. There was no medicine. What happened to me? It was nothing but a dream. In the dreamland, the snake, the bite, the pain, the garden, the medicine, all seem so real. In order to cure that dream bite, you had to take some dream medicine. But in the dreamland, what was the difference between the bite, the pain, the medicine, and the garden? Nothing. They were only different thoughts but your imagination gave them strength, that when you were bitten by a dream snake, you felt the dream pain. And when you took the dream medicine, you felt the dream relief from that pain. Well, with the kundalini, the dream becomes real. See, that's the big difference between a lot of what Yogananda is writing about. What I'm writing about is that, you know, kundalini brings the dream life into a real-time experience that has definite effect upon the physical life. So with you... Being a kundalini aware individual, you really need to distance yourself from substances that will give you a very hurtful experience within a waking vision state, which would be a, a, a dream life that has become awakened for you. 
Okay, so with the methamphetamine, this is one of the worst things you can do. It is illegal, thank God. It is illegal, and yet people are going to continue to do it because people continue to make it. Um, once again, uh, you know, with certain members of the population, karmically they want to experience this degradation. They don't know why, but they have this drive, this this in this insonic drive to experience uh, a horrible uh, and painful. Uh, life into death from these substances. And so, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to deprive those people of their karmic uh, uh, desire to do that. Uh, I'm talking with you, kundalini people, people who are interested in kundalini, people who know of the word outside of kundalini yoga, people who, who understand it as an intelligent, divine, energetic force upon the human being. It's you I'm talking with in these areas. And I know some of you are addicted to these substances. Uh, and I'm cautioning you against continuing that addiction. I am actually uh, imp imploring you to look at the power of the kundalini within you and begin to ask the kundalini in you to begin to reprieve you or to take you out of this addiction format and to follow that up with positive uh, act activities that take you away from the addiction. Follow it through with, with self-behavioral uh, corrections. You know, eat more carrots. If you're, if you're addicted to cigarettes and you have to do something with your fingers, eat a carrot! Eat some celery. I know it sounds silly, but, but eventually, you know, even the, 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 uh, the coordination between your fingers and your hands and having to do something while that cigarette's burning between your fingers is diminished and taken away. Okay, and with methamphetamine, uh, you'll be able to sleep again. You won't be chased so much by the demonic forces. It will take a while to detoxify your body, but it will happen, and you will no longer be, you know, suffer through these areas. Uh, let's move on to to some of the drugs that are based in uh, hallucinogenics. A lot of people, you know, they 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 want to achieve. A, a form of furthering their kundalini, and they don't want to do it through meditation. They don't want to do it through through stilling the mind. They don't want to do it through right action or behavioral modification. They just want to eat that cactus or smoke that substance that you know take the DMT and and travel wherever. And, and once again, I'm going to suggest that you do not do this. I understand, though. You know, I understand being a psychonaut and and Terence McKenna's uh, explorations of, of of the of the mind and the environs of the of the astral and the soul by by use of uh, psychedelic mushrooms, LSD, mescaline, hair, you know, all the different uh, uh, psycho psychotropic and and hallucinogenic uh, light bearing plants. I understand that. I'm not against that. What, what I'm talking about is using that as your sole form of experiential reference point within the kundalini. Once kundalini is awakened, say you do ayahuasca and your kundalini is awakened, you don't need to keep doing ayahuasca to keep experiencing a, a continuous kundalini awakening. Once that key is out of the bottle, there's no putting it back in. And revisiting the key that opened that door isn't going to help you. Okay, it's going to addict you, and you're going to you become addicted to the euphoria that can often come with the ayahuasca. So, you know, I I once had a student who, you know, we went down to uh, Peru, and you know, we did the ayahuasca ceremony, and and I didn't, but but I was kind of chaperoning people, and uh, he had the most amazingly beautiful experience singing and laughing and chortling and chuckling and just a very beautiful experience. He didn't you he didn't do any of the purging that often happens with the ayahuasca. And although another another friend did. But he his his experience was so good that all he wanted to do was replicate it after that. And he chased the replication for the rest of the time we were down there. And uh and it kind of I think it took a it took a uh, a bit of his 
beautiful experience away because, you know, you experience something that is beyond belief and all of a sudden it's believable and you want to keep going back there. And even to this day, he still is searching and searching and searching for that connection. And he's dependent upon outside to inside forces rather than inside to outside forces. Okay? And it, and it develops that kind of a psychological addiction that you can't do it yourself through your own uh, meditation, through your own prayers, through your own spiritual practice, but you must have some sort of a chemical or plant helper to get you there. And I'm saying that is absolutely not true. My Kundalini awakened without any kind of a plant helper. And I, Amelia, can you tell me about yours? Yes, mine in the same way. It had no help. It just awakened spontaneously. Oh, looks like we have a caller. Go ahead and come online, everybody. Hi, you. Caller? You say Hi. something. Hi, who's this? It's Liz. Liz, hello, Liz. Hey, everybody, this is Liz. And Liz is going to be putting on the Boston Kundalini Awakening Seminar. And um, so I invite everybody on the East Coast to to get a hold of Liz. And I, I have her posted on the, uh, the Kundalini Awakening Systems One group on Yahoo!, and I also have her posted on the Facebook Kundalini Awakening Systems. Can you hear me, Liz? All right? Yes, yes. Liz, is there something you want to tell the people about the uh, the event that you're organizing? Uh, you can tell them. You want me to tell them? Okay, all right. So this is happening October uh, 19th and 20th, right, Liz? Yes. This is happening October 19th and 20th, and uh, I will be discussing pretty much everything I've discussed in all 17 or 18 of these radio programs, plus we'll be doing a Shakti Bhav for those who wish to receive an, an ignition of their Kundalini at the base of their spine. Um, I want everybody to to listen to Liz as she gives her email out. Go ahead, Liz. Um. L-Z-H-A-O-6 at Comcast.net. Okay, so that's L-Z-H-A-O, the number 6, at yep. Comcast.net. Okay, so that's yep. not .com, that's .net. That's L-Z-H-A-O-6, the number 6, at Comcast.net, and everybody, uh, everybody who would like to partake of this on the East Coast in Boston, Massachusetts, get a hold of Liz. Uh, she is she is ready, and she is waiting there. And I'm I'm very much looking forward to meeting everyone there. As is Amelia, will be flying out from Ireland for this event. So please this on your calendar, put this on your schedule, uh, give Liz an email, and, uh, and let, let's have a meeting on October 19th and 20th, uh, 2013, in Austin, Massachusetts. Are you there, Liz? Yes. Now, Liz, I'll be contacting you uh, off off radio uh, once I finish this uh, this. This section, okay? That's great. Thank you, my dear. Go ahead and continue listening. Yeah, I am. Okay. That was Liz Zhao, and, and, and she is a wonderful, wonderful organizer. She has she came to the Santa Rosa uh, seminar that I just had about two weekends ago, and it was a very successful seminar. And, uh, you know, I would also like to thank... Uh, uh, everybody who attended that seminar and, and, and the organizers, Amelia and Eileen, for bringing that to life, and, uh, and 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 Barbara Berry as well. So thank you, everyone, for that excellent seminar. And I do look forward to having another one uh, October 19th and 20th, 2013, in Boston, Massachusetts. And please contact Liz, whose email is L-Z-H-A-U, the number six, at Comcast.net, and as we move as we move forward into into our 
into our conversation, I would like to talk with you. I talked to you a bit about the hallucinogens and how they become an addiction that is based upon your being able to visit these areas without, you know, by, by use of the magic mushroom, by use of the LSD, or by use of the DMT, otherwise known as dimethyltryptamine, and by use of, you know, San Pedro or any of these things. Now, I'm not against an occasional usage of these things, if, uh, you know, especially if you're outside of the United States. I cannot support their usage inside the United States because they're illegal here. So don't use them inside the U.S. They're legal. They're illegal, I'm sorry. They're illegal inside the U.S. Go outside the U.S. and use them there. Um, yeah, occasional usage is not a big deal. You just don't turn it into an addiction. You don't turn it into an instant success, therefore this is all I do to get to the spiritual places. Uh, with Kundalini, Kundalini is a very high spiritual expression, extremely high, so strong and so powerful, it changes the molecular structure of your body. Not just, you know, letting you see glimpses of another reality, you know, the thousands of eyes that are staring at you when you take the DMT or the, you know, the many different visions that come with the... Uh, the magic mushroom and all these things. These can have a deleterious effect upon a person who is looking for God or looking for the inner divine within themselves. This can have a very deleterious effect because what it does is, is it, it, through the repeated use, it can stimulate a kundalini awakening, especially the magic mushrooms. The magic mushrooms can blow a person's head off, literally. Blow the top of the crown wide open, and that person begins seeing visions in their waking time, day and night. It doesn't matter. You see them. They can talk with you. They can scare you. You don't know who they is. You don't know what they is. And all you're doing is is is, is running. You're you're always running from a from a uh, a. Now let me roll the window up here. You're always running from a a, a series of of stimulus. You know a voice in your head or a certain type of vision, you know, you get so wrapped up in the phenomena that you're unable to differentiate phenomena from from your reality-based phenomena, and it becomes very, very confusing, and subsequently you will end up in the psych ward under the heaviest tranquilizers, uh, typically Depakote or some form of lithium, and uh, that will be you for a while. Okay, so I want you to really do your best to avoid that. I have no problem with magic mushrooms, psilocybin. Uh, once again, they're illegal in the United States, so we don't promote their use in the United States, nor any other country where their use is illegal. But if you can find a place where it isn't, then uh, you can indeed experience these these substances. And by the power of your experience, you may become addicted uh, and once again, I'm going to tell you that the kundalini path is a much cleaner path. You do not need to eat a plant or take a molecule, you know, like the DMT molecule. You don't have to do that. You just have to begin to initiate a process of the safeties. And if you go to kundalini awakening systems, the number one dot com, and look at the left hand uh, menu, you'll see the safeties uh, title there. It's called the safeties. Click on that. Read that, copy that out, and begin to practice those techniques, especially the forgiveness. Especially the forgiveness. Begin to forgive everyone in your life. And then and then begin to tolerate the difficult people in your life, the difficult situations that come your way. And then begin to, to really understand that the power of the divine is within you, and it's at the base of your spine. And as you do, each of the five Tibetans, you're pulling a micro-awakening amount of the kundalini up through your first chakra, second chakra, third chakra, fourth chakra, and fifth chakra. It is a blessed practice. It is a divine practice. Let that be the practice that you choose in order to awaken the kundalini and begin to purify yourself through the self-correction of the emotional body. You forgive past and present uh, uh, hurts and, and the inflictions of pain that you've given to others and others have given to you. You forgive it. You tolerate the, you know, the, the difficult people in your life, the difficult situations. You become extremely honest. You become extremely kind 
you practice ahimsa, which is not causing harm to anything. Okay? You do the pranayama, which brings in more energy into the body and, and begins to strengthen the body through the pranayama and the increased prana uh, accumulation within the body. Okay? You do these things, and it will bring upon a kundalini awakening and a purification, too. So don't don't be surprised if all of a sudden your skin breaks out or you get, you get blisters in your mouth or you get, you know, certain problems that, that come upon you. The, the body will begin to detoxify itself, to purify itself. And as this occurs, yes, you may have physical manifestation of that detox and that purification. Don't be surprised. Don't be afraid of it. Don't rush off to the emergency room. Oh, my God, I've got canker sores. Where did they come from? You can expect it in, in however a way it chooses to come. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Once your kundalini comes up, you're going to have physiological changes occur. Those physiological, physiological changes will bring about great leaps of, of, of physical joy and love and grace. But it will also bring about great leaps of purification and detoxification. So don't be afraid of the negative aspects or the, the shall I say, the challenging aspects of your kundalini awakening experience. Do we have another one? Yep. Okay. So let's 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 continue from the hallucinogens. Let's just go straight to marijuana. Marijuana is a very commonly used uh plant helper and to some a light bearing plant. Uh once again at at this point in the United States, uh here in California it's not absolutely illegal. The federal government says it's illegal. The state governments are saying, well maybe we want to tax it. <laughs> so plenty of uh, medical dispensaries for marijuana are moving in. And Oregon and Colorado have passed a recreational uh, marijuana uh, uh, initiative in those states, and so people can can use it recreationally now. And, and frankly, I don't really have a problem with with marijuana. Yes, there is an addictive aspect to it. Don't let people talk to you and say, "Oh no, it's not addictive." No, dude, here. Yeah, pass the joint. It's not addictive, really, really. You know, it's a smoke morning, noon, and night. I, I'm not buying it, okay? I'm just not buying it. When my kundalini came up and I was trying to figure out what the heck was going on, you know, I tried, a, you know, some of the marijuana as well, and, and uh, it does have an addictive quality. Uh, it doesn't help, but it doesn't hurt so much either. It It forms a quality of... You burn out your your crown, so I can't recommend it. Uh, repeated usage begins to burn out aspects of the seventh chakra, which is the divine connection. The divine connection exists at the top of the head, where the fontanel comes out. And this is, you know, you've heard perhaps of the thousand petaled lotus that is the seventh chakra. You know, if you follow any of the Hindu writings teachings. Uh, the crown chakra, you know, if you look at it from a Christian aspect, the crown, the crowning glory, uh, your direct communicative link from the physical and, and, and energetic aspects of your being to that of the divine force. And so absolutely do not burn out those areas. My gosh, don't do that. If you want to partake of those, you know, of, of the marijuana, you know, Fine, do it once or twice a year, if that. But don't do it every day, morning, noon, and night. And don't think that because it doesn't give you irreparable harm, that it that harm isn't happening on an energetic level. Sure, you know, your your lungs are bringing, you know, typically they're not filtered. And so you're bringing in tars, you're bringing in uh, ash into your lungs, and your lungs are being damaged. So the alveoli in the lungs are being damaged. Uh, the top of the head, the crown chakra is being damaged. The fifth chakra is being damaged. Okay? If you have to take it, eat it. Don't smoke it. And if you have to take it at all, always do it so, you know, within a sacred, ceremonial, uh, spiritually honest, and, and, uh, and love-based practice. Do not do it just because it's fun just because it makes you feel good. That forms the addiction. You see? That forms the addiction. 
So I don't recommend marijuana use. Once again, as with many of these drugs, I don't feel that you have to use it in order to have the kundalini. It didn't happen for me that way, and it doesn't have to happen for you. If it has happened for you, don't blame it on the marijuana. Don't go, oh, dude, just like, I smoked this joint, and my kundalini awoke. It was so cool. Your kundalini probably would have awakened anyway. Now, marijuana does serve some very positive benefits, and I don't want to diminish those. Uh, you know, it makes a great fuel. It makes great clothing. It makes, you know, it's a, it's a protein. I mean, you know, gosh, there's, there's, there's so many amazing uses of cannabis. It's, a, it's just mind-boggling that we're not using it as a society to help our society, and yet we're not because, you know, of course, you know, there's lots of money in, 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 in forcing people not to do something that they want to do. Um, I, I'm certainly not, I'm I'm a supporter of the of the use of cannabis, and for those people that have cancer, uh, I would rather them use spiritual means of, of of curing their cancer, or you know through you know Yogananda suggests you know dietary changes and and taking uh, medical uh, you know taking the medical advice in addition to spiritual and mental uh, uh, vectors of treatment, not just just the medical vector, you know, that's pretty much trying to sit on a three-legged stool and then cutting two of the legs off. Uh, so, you know, I would suggest that you, you begin to look at a, at a much broader range of, of treatment. But for the, uh, you know, for the negative effects of, of chemotherapy, I think cannabis usage is an excellent opportunity. And, you know, within the context of your uh, MD and you know, I would suggest that you follow that MD's advice. If he's saying, hey, you might want to do this in order to to uh, counteract some of, the, some of the damaging effects of chemotherapy. And I have one of my parents has cancer right now, and, and you know, it's the same type of scenario. So I just want you to know that, that marijuana and cannabis is a, is a beautiful gift from the divine, but you don't need to use it to the point of addiction. You need to use it with a common sense uh, and with, with less of a daily frequency or even a weekly frequency. You know, don't burn out the areas of divine communication that cause one to be able to have the communication that comes from uh, the Kundalini awakening. Now let's move into the pharmaceuticals. These are the drugs that are given by MDs who basically have no clue about the Kundalini. Uh, the, the, you know, these are the the the, uh, the types of drugs that they call mood stabilizers. Hello, everyone. I'm going to stabilize your mood now. How does that feel? Yes. Uh, you know, these are Prozac-based uh, SSRIs. And they are they are negatively uh, connotated in Kundalini awakening uh, uh, energetic physiology. If your MD is prescribing a mood stabilizer, uh, you might want to question that, pull back that, make sure it's not an SSRI, and 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 see how it impacts your Kundalini. A lot of you may be having Kundalini as a problem, maybe having Kundalini syndrome, and. And because of, of the effect of the Kundalini syndrome, you know, you you have uh, you you put yourself into a psychiatric hospital, and they're giving you Depakote or Depakote and lithium, and you know, a whole cocktail of other drugs just to see what happens. Um, you know, and, and and because it doesn't kill you, therefore it must be successful. Um, I want you to, you know, as as you're able, hopefully, eventually, able to get out of that hospital context, uh, bring yourself into a an understanding of the kundalini and then take yourself off of those drugs. Those drugs, you know, you are in charge of your medical condition. You are, you, you are in charge of what you put into your body, not some MD that wants to kind of see what happens when you add this to your system. Uh, you can say, I don't want to take this anymore. And so I, I encourage you to take charge of your medical life and, and refuse certain things that do not cohabitate well with your kundalini. SSRIs typically do not cohabitate well 
with a person's Kundalini. And so you want to look at that and have a conversation with your MD, your medical practitioner, and uh, discuss maybe another alternative. Uh, I am not an MD, so I will not give you any kind of medical advice whatsoever. But if it were my cat, Lasha, I would definitely follow the protocols that I've just explained. Okay. With Lasha, I can, I can, I can do these things. She's a calico cat, and she definitely uh, has an interesting energetic uh, activity going on with her. So, so with the pharmaceuticals, do not take the, the pretty purple pill, you know, if you have an allergy. Do not reach for the pills every time you have a problem. Uh, you know, we were just at the Yogananda um, uh, ashram in Encinitas, California, and we picked up some of his literature. I've been there a few times. And, you know, he, he has some extremely helpful advice with regards to keeping the body healthy. So, for instance, if you have a cold, don't drink a hot drink. Do not drink a hot drink. Neither should you drink an extremely cold drink. If you're going to drink anything, drink it at room temperature. If you're going to have a cold, the first thing you need to do is if you feel it in your nose first, you want to stop it from getting into your throat. Because there are three there are the three vectors of a cold is in the nasal passages, in the throat, and then into the lungs. Okay. So you need to stop it in the nose. And the and the and the, the, the advice that you want to follow is starve a cold and feed a fever. So go on a twenty four hour fast. Go on a twenty four hour fast and kick that cold first. That's what you do. You can do a fast. I would suggest that many, many, many of you listening to this will be able to do a fast, a 24-hour fast. Okay, and uh, and I know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, very beneficial things can happen from the effects of being in a, uh, on a fast. Uh, and we're not talking about weight loss. We're just talking about kicking the body's immune system into a higher gear. And with that, also the, to- the detoxification effects of your awakened kundalini can also come into into play here. If you have a lot of toxins that, that that the kundalini hasn't released from you yet because it's doing it slowly, well, then you can suffer from some of these these uh, colds or blues or whatever. Or if you're living in a city and constantly, you know, receiving more toxicity just from the fact that you're you're living in a city surrounded by dust that is composed of asphalt and diesel cinders and uh, nitrogen oxides and, and, you know, carbon monoxides and all the various disease uh, vectors that come from being in in condensed artificial uh, human housing areas. I mean, you know, you, you're constantly in a state in a state of toxifying as your kundalini is detoxifying, and so a different uh, level of of uh, a different level of, of stability is is being is being processed here. Kundalini's letting it go; you're bringing it in. Kundalini's letting it go; you're bringing it in. Okay, looks like I might be running out of time here. Um, I'm looking at the uh, the iPad does a really interesting thing with the studio, the Blog Talk studio. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to wrap it up for you folks. You do not need a substance, alcohol, methamphetamine, hallucinogens, uh, uh, pharmaceutical things in order to initiate a kundalini act- activation or modulate an existent kundalini awakening. You do not need it. You just need to trust in the divine. Talk with the divine. Get to know that divine force within you. Do the meditation. Do the stillness meditation. Not a walking meditation, not a driving meditation, which, of course, I like to do, but a stillness meditation. Be still and know the God that is within you. And uh, Amelia Santara would like to add something. And I would add, reach for the safeties instead of a cigarette or alcohol, because the safeties, you know, that's that's how they work. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you want something to do of a positive spiritual nature, you begin those safety protocols. 
Uh, I would like to thank everybody who's listening in the archives. And I've noticed that it seems that more people listen in the archives than in in any other section. I just want to say hello to you. I'd like to say hello to you in Finland. I would like to say hello to you in San Pablo, California. I would like to say hello to you in Boston, Massachusetts, in, in Ireland, in South America, in China, in Australia. I want to say hello to you all, and I want to send you in every... Amelia's saying everywhere, Chris. I'm saying everywhere. <laughs> so, so I will take her advice. I'll say, I would like to say thank you to everyone everywhere who's listening to this broadcast, and hopefully it is helping you in some way. If you have any questions, you can give me an email at K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L, that's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L, at yahoo.com, or kundalinimatters at gmail.com. So there you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk with you with another conversation in your Kundalini Awakening experience next week. Thanks.